So Peter Lund is um, is a professor in advanced research energy systems at Aalto University, with close to 40 years of experience in energy technologies, systems and policies. And today you will talk about um, cities for the future and pathways to the climate leadership. So the stage is yours. <laughs> hey, thank you very much and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So my talk is about cities. And, and the reason for that is because cities are very important for the future, in particular when we speak about energy and climate. I would say that if we forget cities, uh, you, you can forget the climate change solutions. So important are they. So the, uh, my presentation uh, will outline, it has outlined that very briefly, talk about cities as a problem first. Well, cities are a problem, but they are for sure a solution. So there's this kind of dilemma and trade-off that we need to th find find a solution out of the cities. And I will highlight how the cities can definitely work as a, a solution. And then uh, we're depicting some kind of bad pathway to the future, and then the panel will discuss, discuss uh, the actions, etc. Now, when we speak about the, uh, the cities of the future, uh, there's uh, three things that, that need to be actually thought about uh, in parallel. Climate change is definitely one of the key issues that drives the uh, development and our investments and why we are here today. But there's two uh, even at least uh, as important issues that need to be considered. Globalization, and cities definitely is the key for globalization. Think about Helsinki, even though we are very north, this is a very pluralistic society. Most of the foreigners live in Helsinki. So these are, cities are kind of platforms for globalization in a very positive s sense as well. The prosperity of the cities would not be possible without uh, foreigners. If we take, for instance, Silicon Valley as an example, half of the startups come from foreigners, not from the, uh, the domestic people. So globalization may be a, a very important source uh, for solutions, for people to innovate and bring new ideas. And third uh, point, or the second on my list, is technology, which is always important. Technology is a catalyst for development. So, and, and we see new technologies emerging all the time. Take digitalization what kind of huge opportunities that could uh, open up in a city. Digital cities, what would that mean? We maybe not, don't need to move in the same way as we did before. We can hit our buildings in a much more uh, clever way, and more energy efficiency. All these opportunities open up, uh, I would say, in a very good way in, in a city. But let's keep in mind those three uh, important uh, factors that change the globe and which are important for the future. Putting all in an urban context, uh, understand now the problems and the solutions in, in parallel. So most of the energy use, most of the energy environment impact, that comes from cities. And most of the people want to live in cities. Urbanization rates are still increasing. And if you go a few decades from now, most of the people will live in cities. And most of our energy definitely will be used in the cities. And most of our pollution waste comes from the cities. So the solutions have to come from the cities. We can't not kind of uh, externalize them outside the cities. Uh, the innovation aspect of the cities are very important. The more people you have, the more you have innovation. Think you yourself as a human being. If there wouldn't be anybody around, so think about how innovative you would be. The more people you have, the more innovation you have. The more different people you have, the more in innovation you have. And that's why these kind of cities are, as pluralistic platforms are extremely important, because they bring solutions. Uh, just look at the numbers. Uh, uh, a city can have a, a GNP much larger than a, a, a country. And that, I think, is also maybe even true for Helsinki. Half of the GNP is, is created by the metropolitan region, and even more so in the future. So the cities are engines of growth. And hopefully in the future, engines of sustainable growth, which is part of the solution. Let's have a look on the uh, three factors now which uh, form our future, and, and which are kind of boundary conditions that we need to keep in mind when we think about cities uh, as solutions or problems. And the first one, which you for sure know, is the cl uh, global climate change. And, and the Paris Agreement, which uh, lays the uh, let's say, last, uh, latest boundary uh, conditions for the climate change. 
we, need that, we know that we need to reduce our emissions. But there are even more profound uh, issues with the emissions uh, reduction that we need to keep in mind. By the middle of this century, uh, the net carbon emissions, what does that mean? A few seconds about that. Net carbon emissions need to be zero. So what you release to the atmosphere need to be absorbed by sinks like forests or CCS, you name it. 2050, you have to be in balance. So in about 35 years, less, no emissions from cities like Helsinki. If there's anybody from Helsinki, so your timeline with 2030, closing the uh, coal power plants, seems to be slightly late. So wake up, it's important. After 2050, and that's really uh, something for rich countries like the Nordic countries, Finland. After 2050, you start, need to start extract CO2 from the atmosphere. It's not enough that we don't have emissions, but we have to extract, take away uh, those emissions which were emitted during the last 150 years. We start, need to start to take back those. So this is the kind of a cool print of a plan for keeping the uh, temperature at about 1.5 degrees. So that's the challenge. And you can uh, imagine that you can't do this in an incremental way. So Helsinki, bioenergy may not be the solution for coal, but you need to look even beyond. It may be because of these numbers, bioenergy in the way we use in Finland will be a fossil fuel in the future. So looking on future strategies, Woods, forests becomes extremely important sinks of CO2. And they get more value as sinks, maybe as, than s as sources of energy. Sorry about my critical uh, uh, comments to, to my, my, uh, my s own city, city today. Now, if these are the problems, so what are the solutions? Technology definitely is a solution. Here, just uh, I don't go into numbers, but let me say that Major scenarios uh, worldwide, IPCC, IA, you name it, show that, yeah, we have possibilities to decrease the c uh, CO2 emissions to a level which is sustainable. In all scenarios that we've seen since 2008, since about 10 years, there's a clear message is that future problems will not be solved with the technology of the past. Future problems need future solutions. What are the future solutions? They are future technologies. So energy efficiency as number one and renewable new energy technologies as number two. They together constitute in most of the scenarios about 70 to 75 percent of the solution to bring the CO2 emissions down. So this is a, a consensus. That yes, we need new technologies, more effective technologies than in the past to really mitigate the uh, CO2 emissions. What does this mean to the cities? So each sector of the energy need to uh, reduce emissions. The power sector definitely, the way we produce electricity, but also the way we produce centralized heat, emissions in those sectors need to be brought down. And this is the most important. Coal represents about 45% 40 of the CO2 emissions globally. Oil, around more than 40, so together 80% of all emissions would be from coal and oil, power and transport. So those are very, very important sectors. We need power in our cities. Uh, the more we use drones, the more you buy from Amazon, etc. the more electricity you will need. So the power sector will be very important for cities and the way the urban life will evolve in the next decades. Transport and buildings, as you see on, on the screen, they are important, and that's where we need also to reduce emissions. Again, typical sectors for citizens in, in a, a city. So most of the real reductions of CO2 address the cities. I mean, they, they really put on a silver plate the question to the cities. Power, transport, buildings, that's the essence of a city. With those elements, you make a city. So that's where we need to go to the really the grounding uh, layers of the city to understand the problem. Now, these are uh, trends, uh, visions. Now, let's go to the facts. Two thirds of all new power investments goes already to clean energy, to renewable energy. Solar, wind, bioenergy are the most important uh, investments objects if you look on power. And from 
now onwards during the next few decades, three quarter of all investments goes to clean energy, solar, wind, and bio. And you see on the screen that the uh, technology like solar, I asked myself when I walked here, where's the solar in Helsinki? Well, I don't see it. But it will be the most important source of uh, new investments. Uh, I know that some of you said, well, Peter, you forgot that, well, we don't have a solaration here in, in Finland, and there, there's the winters, winter and the summer uh, mismatch. I will come with an answer on that in, in a second. There's a positive change. Things move. Things move to a very good uh, 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 direction. Now, just to give you understanding of the pace of the movement, these things change exponentially, which you don't understand. Why? Because your mind is linear, like mine. Solar it increases exponentially, uh, uh, the uh, batteries, electric vehicles exponentially, wind energy maybe not anymore, but these are growing very fast. Most of the new technologies make breakthroughs. The price would be okay. Wind doesn't need any subsidies. Solar doesn't need any subsidies. They are competitive. We need to come back to that. Why are they not on the roofs already when we, we when was that the case? So technologies become now cheaper or they have become cheaper. Now about the que question about this uh, solar solar question in Finland. Uh, Finland have solar energy about the same amount that most of the Central European countries. You have to go to the south in Germany or beyond the Alps that they have really more solar. We get our most of the solar between uh, February, March to uh, to about uh, early October. In that time, believe it or not, statistics shows that Helsinki is the sunniest city in in EU. Yes, that's why I never believed this, but that's the statistic shows. I can't believe it. It's incredible. But anyway, it's the truth. So what we did, we we take the computer, write the code, and let's see, let's see what we can do with solar. And I take your home, uh, let's say maybe you have a home with uh, a, a domestic household profile. You don't heat your building now with electricity. I put some panels on the roof. And uh, what I do is I size my panels to correspond your yearly demand. Uh, so I have about 20 square meters of panel on my roof. With a battery, I could produce about 30% of my electricity uh, directly with solar. But then there's the mismatch. Now to today you would have too much solar. So you have to sell to the grid. And most likely you don't get any, any reimbursement of that. But put one battery of the size. By the, question, by the way, do anybody have a Nissan Leaf? Nissan Leaf in this audience. Electric vehicle. Yes. Uh, if you could borrow, borrow me one quarter of your battery. Give me one quarter. Yeah, yeah yes, he gives. Let me put a one quarter of the battery and to my photovoltaic system now. I would get 70% of the time, 70% of my electricity from solar. And the pie which is shown here, everything with red shows that I get 100%, 100% percent of my demand with solar. Three challenges are here, you see. Well, that's the November, December, January. So forgot about those. But that's not important. We would not match for the seasonal solar profile, but for the daily. Let's store from the day to night. That's enough. That brings us to 70%. 70% of all your electricity what you need. What is with the cost? Well, batteries may be still costly, but let's say the photovoltaic part is okay in terms of your electric bill. So this is already becoming reality. This is not science fiction. Putting this, uh, these things now to a more uh, holistic, systemic view. What does it mean? Uh, when you have technologies which are about the size as your load and uh, something that you as consumers could buy. It, it means that the power production, energy production comes much more closer to the end use. It means that cities becomes more like a consumer and a, a prosumer. We produce and consume at the same time. We don't need a very hierarchical uh, energy system, but we can produce locally on your roofs, on your lawn, you, you name it. And, and that's a very radical change. That means that the whole business logics of power and energy may change completely. 
you may see, uh, like Mrs. Marta here in New York, that's the, uh, on the le left hand side, they have small microgrids in New York now where the, the, uh, the habitat in the suburb can produce electricity and sell e electricity by neighbors. Use blockchain and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and you can really trade with your neighbors. So if A has too much electricity and B too little, let's just trade, shift, and uh, that's the storage. So solutions provide, uh, so cities produce a lot of solutions, a lot of technologies. There's a myriad of technologies, ICT, energy waste, you name it. And there's a very important point which we uh, very briefly just touched is that cities provide inherent flexibility. Inherent flexibility means storage. So if, if there's a big cloud in Espo, and here is not, we can shift solar to Espo and vice versa. And we can use the different sectors of the energy much more effectively. Most of the energy Helsinki is, and actually all cities, is heat. If you combine heat and electricity together, let's just not look on electricity, but let's look on energy. It would mean that Helsinki could easily produce 60%, six zero, of all its power with wind, without any energy storage, and without a single kilowatt hour which would go beyond the boundary of the city. And that's because of the intersectoral, you see this P2X, P2H technologies. I think you haven't maybe heard about those, but that's the new paradigm of energy. It's not solar, wind, uh, nuclear. It's P2X, P2G, P2H, P2T, V2G. These are new acronyms of energy, and they solve the problems with energy storage. Now, I wondered when I came here why there's no solar panels. Even though when I put into my scenario solar with the price, it shows that Helsinki may go up to 500 megawatts. And they may be one megawatt. So why, does we, do, why don't we have any solar here? And the reason is that, well, it's not about technology or price, ladies and gentlemen, but it's also about the social system, politicians, decisions about us. Even the solar would be free. It would never penetrate in Finland before the politicians, your decisions makers, in cities or in the government, change their attitude. It's the most important thing after this lecture and, and, and very wonderful uh, conference is to write to your politician, to ask, why don't we have any solar? As in Denmark, they have over, uh, close to 1,000 megawatts, and it's always raining in Denmark. Oh, sorry, guys. Why don't we have that? Why there's about 2,000 times, 3,000 times more solar in Germany? And it's not more sunnier. So, so these are the questions that we need to do, and that's because of the social dimension of cities, which is important. And finally, I, I need to leave you now with a few key actions, which may be something for then uh, to talk in the panel. But again, don't forget the the cities as, as a solution in terms of the pluralism that we, we, which we have, it gave so positive dynamics. And if you have dynamics, it means resilience. And then the rest is, is just to change the prevailing political system in that way that the solutions get into the, to the uh, cities. So with these words, I thank you very much, and uh, I, I leave you with the chair, please. Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, we have time for, for one or two comments uh, or questions uh, for this very uh, comprehensive presentation. So now you... Now <laughs> so, uh, should we make the <coughs> questions to the <coughs> audience? Yes, yes. yes? Uh, uh, let's ask a question from the audience. Um, you mentioned this... Um, very well, that the social dimension is quite important when uh, when talking about um, solar. And I was also asking before uh, uh, from the previous um, presenter about uh, how to speed it, this process of, of increasing solar uh, uh, in our in our uh, energy palette. So uh, so now if there are any uh, any good examples from any cities, what have you done? Uh, I would like to hear. Yes. I am not from a city, I'm from VTT, uh, Miala Jusela. 
but there are already good examples of this. When you put uh, solar panels on your roof, the neighbors will start getting interested. So that's a good initiative. And when they uh, share these good examples uh, and the ideas, it's going to increase. I think it's so uh, excellent solutions. We have had a solution here. And uh, what she's saying is, is, is very important ownership. Ownership of the solution is important. Mostly in, in, in uh, our countries, not just Finland, in many countries, how would, you decide, how would you be part of the big solutions? I think they are outsourced by some, some as doing there. It's important to engage, and I think city is, is about engagement. Engage people, get the ownership of this solution. Get the, uh, give power to the suburbs to decide about these things. And let them compete, as Mia said, I mean, Finnish are jealous people, so if the neighbor has, we will do also. Engagement, ownership, is very important, and that's something the cities can, can do, I think, because we are networks. So this is a very good to do for all of us after this conference. Um, go back home and um, think about how to install solar in your own home or apartment. There's another question. Or energy or efficiency, comment. by the way, that's I think it's very important. So uh, yeah. Yes. This is actually not a question, but just information that there was the excellent pro uh, project Fin Solar, which better was a part of that project, which provides excellent information on the websites. But for private people, go on the websites Ilmasto Info. They there is a purchase of. Uh, solar panels, it's made as easy as possible. There you have all the providers and from those pages I also find how to calculate what you get when you are going to buy solar panels and you will definitely find one which is suitable for you. And also there's a group of purchase now just going on now. Just give your name to the end of May, then you will be part of the bigger board of solar panels. Please welcome. Check the website, Ilmasto Info. If, if I may apologize why I talk so much about solar today, because it's a nice day. There's other solutions as well. Energy efficiency, I think building energy efficiency may be the cheapest way to produce, in a way, energy. Energy efficiency, heat pumps, all these new kind of uh, sustainable technologies are important. I use solar as to just to, in, in a way, symbolize all these new technologies. So apology if I've, I've squeezed too much, biased too much to one technology. I think there's a, a, a range of important technologies, depending on your kind of case, which may apply uh, equally. Another good site for solar is aurinkosähkökotiin.fi, held by Motiva. There's a lot of good information about solar there for everyone. Super. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. Uh, let's give uh, applause once more, and actually, you can um, directly stay here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.